Hello, welcome to module 53 of NPTEL NOC on point set topology part 2. The title of this today's talk is an application to quotient maps of what of the exponential correspondence that we have studied last time. A natural question that arises with respect to the quotient topology is the following. Suppose you have two quotient maps qi from xi to zi, i equal to 1 and 2. Is the product map q1 cross q2 from x1 cross x2 to z1 cross z2 a quotient map? So, you may be surprised that in general this is not true. See, surjectivity will be still there, continuity is still there. If Q1 or Q2 is a Q1 and Q2 are open maps, the product is also an open map. But in general, we have to study other quotient maps. The quotient, not all quotient maps are open maps, right? So, here is the well satisfactory answer. In any case, this question was actually raised in part 1 itself when we were studying quotient maps. So, today we will have a satisfactory answer. Q1 cross Q2 can be written as Q1 cross identity composite identity cross q2 okay this is just a set theoretic fact for any function of a product sets so if i have shown that each one on the right hand side is a quotient map composite of quotient maps is a quotient map therefore Q1 cross Q2 will be also a quotient map. Therefore, question is reduces to the special case when out of Q1 and Q2 you assume one of them is an identity map. By symmetry, whichever one you assume, it is the same thing. Q1 cross identity or identity cross Q2. If you show for all Q2, okay, this is true, that is fine. It will also imply it is, it is true for all Q1. So, what we shall do is that we shall show that if X is locally compact regular space, then for any quotient map Q from Y to Z, Q cross identity of X is a quotient map. Okay, so this is the condition locally compact orthodox. Okay, locally compact regular. Locally compact Horsdorf implies locally compact regular. So we will take this step in. We will take this one. Locally compact regular. Let us recall a fact about quotient topologies. A continuous surjective map of topological spaces is a quotient map if filled only if it satisfies the following property. Given alpha from A to B, that is a continuous surjection is given. When is it a quotient map or when the topology on B will be a quotient topology? It is this is a condition. For every topological space W, every function G from B to W, some set theoretic function, if the composite is continuous, then G must be continuous. If G is continuous, then the composite is continuous is obvious. Because con composite of continuous functions is continuous. Here it is the other way around. If this is satisfied for every G, then alpha will be a quotient map. So I am not going to prove this one. This has been proved and used several times. I am going to use it now. 
starting with q cross identity which is surjective and continuous under the hypothesis that the topological space x is locally compact and regular we are going to prove that this thing is a quotient map right what we need to prove we need to prove the following condition take any w and any map g from z cross x to w okay any function such that when you compose it with q cross identity that is continuous okay then g is continuous this is what we have so this is the diagram this is given y cross x to z cross x q cross identity we want to prove this is a quotient map so take any w and any g here this g will be continuous if you assume g composite this uh, q cross identity and then compose it with g that is continuous that is what we have Okay, now how do you use the exponential correspondence? When you have this function continuous, we know this is the same thing as saying that there is a map from y to set of all you know, space of all continuous functions from x to w. Okay, x to w. All right. See. What is that map? It is given by the exponential correspondence. This f is replaced by f hat here, given by f hat of any point y, the same thing is f of y x. So you get a continuous function. Okay. The exponential correspondence says that f hat is continuous if we know this f is continuous. Okay, so this we are going to use now. So once you have this, look at this also here, which is just y to z, the given map q. Okay, z to g, you have some function here, g hat, okay, z cross x to w. We have some function here, I don't know whether it's continuous. But what I know is, g hat composite q is f hat. This is just a uh, set theoretic fact. Okay, g hat of z is defined as g of operating upon any x is g of z x, right? So for that reason, this will be this g hat composite this q composite g hat is a fact. Okay. So, this is continuous, but I have started with q as a quotient map, therefore g hat is continuous. But once g hat is continuous, exponential correspondence says that this g is continuous. The proof is over. Okay. So, proof that product of any two quotient maps is a quotient map is still not yet over that is not true if one of them is locally compact fast or locally compact regular then it holds this is what we have done so now we can use that to to just give you satisfactory answer this is not a if and only kind of answer okay but it's a useful thing Suppose you have y1 cross y2 to z1 cross z2, you have q1 cross q2. So, two quotient maps and then you have taken the product. You can come to z1 cross z2 from here in two different ways. q1 cross identity of y2, then followed by identity of z1 cross q2. Or first identity of y1 cross q2 and then followed by q1 cross identity of z2. Okay. So, the statement is if y1 and here z2 are locally compact regular, then this composite is a quotient map because each of them is a quotient map. 
or you may use the other hypothesis here namely z1 z1 uh, say y2 is a quotient map y y2 is a regular a locally compact regular and here z1 is locally compact regular so y1 z2 or z1 y2 or there is no necessity that both should be there y1 and z2 or z1 and y2 that is the meaning of this one okay locally compact order of spaces then q1 cross q2 is a quotient okay now we come to the main theorem in this section in this uh, today's talk let us and that is due to my care so here is a partial converse you may say start the regular space or a, maybe you can stay with the host or space it doesn't matter okay start with the regular space that is important then the following conditions are equivalent so it's only partial converse regularity cannot be replaced x is locally compact then every quotient map q from y to z the product identity of x cross q is also a quotient map one implies two is what we have seen the converse is you have to two implies one so if this happens for every every quotient map q from y to z if identity cross q is a quotient map x must be locally compact this is much stronger than just saying that locally compactness under uh, under the assumption uh, that you don't assume locally compact the theorem is false you can give that for that you can just give a counter example right but here this is a theorem here okay how do we prove this by assuming that x is not locally compact we will extract a space y and a quotient map of y y to z q such that identity of x cross q is not a quotient map so this is the uh, plan of the proof here okay here we are going to use the exercise 10.9 only this is part of your uh, uh, preparatory assignments or practice assignments 10 okay this was not in the main part but in the practice session the main result is another not so familiar criterion for compact Okay, that is also part of this one. If you have not done it or tried it, okay, it is time that you should read the solution given. However, right now I can't afford that one. So what I will do? I will just recall the this uh, exercise here that I am going to use. Okay, exercise ten point nine. look at this uh, part 4 here okay so this is the main thing that i have to you let x be a topological space show that x is compact spin on lift the following condition holds for every family f of closed subsets closed subsets of x with finite intersection property and linearly ordered by set inclusion we have intersection of all elements of this curly f is non empty remember if i remove this linearly ordered by set inclusion if i remove this condition this and is what this is a familiar condition for you namely if every family of closed subsets of x with finite intersection property has a non empty intersection so that is a, a larger condition right so here we don't we don't need all of them only those which are linearly ordered by set inclusions 
F1 containing F2, containing F3, you can take decreasing, just like in Cantor sets, Cantor sets the theorem and so on. You can take increasing, by you can reverse the inclusion, you will get decreasing, there is no problem. But, the point is, don't try it F1, F2, that will give you, that it is, uh, you mislead you, it is going to, what is it, uh, countable. There is no countability assumption here. This is just a linearly ordered. That is uh, the whole point here. Okay. Now try to uh, prove this one, but later on, anyway, we will give you a solution. The other thing is, this problem 3 here, let x be, uh, sorry, uh, this one, namely, uh, problem 2 here, let L comma less than or equal to be a non-empty linearly ordered set with P belonging to P. Some point I have chosen, P belong to L. Okay. Then, there is a non-empty subset W of this L such that W is co-final in L and restricted to W, it is, this ordering is well ordered. Moreover, the point P with that we have chosen is the least element. So, I do not use this full force, what, what I need is, every non-empty linearly ordered set has a non-empty well ordered subset which is co -fired. So, this is what I am going to use. To prove this one, you will need 1. To prove 4, you will need 3 also. But that you read on your own. So that is why they are the 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So, let us go back to Michael's theorem. So, as I told you, to prove the unique uh, equivalence of 1 and 2, we have only to prove 2 implies 1. 1 implies 2 has been taken care by the previous theorem. So, start with a topological space X, which is not locally compact. We shall construct a quotient map Q from Y to Psi, such that identity of X cross Q or Q cross identity of X, it does not matter, okay, is not a quotient map. Okay. Suppose x is not locally compact, at some point x not belonging to x, then it is not locally compact, there is at least one, one such point at which it is not locally compact, right. That, what does that mean? There is a family u a a belonging to a, I have just, in, this a is nothing but just an indexing set, be a neighborhood system in x not, such that none of u a bar is compact, ok. So, this is the meaning of that x naught is not locally compact. There will be a neighborhood system such that u a bars are not compact, alright. What does that mean? Each u a bar is not, is not compact means what? Now, I am using this exercise 10.94 that I told you. For each A inside A, we have a family F A of non-empty closed subsets linearly ordered by inclusion of sets such that intersection of F, F intersection, F belong to F A is empty. Okay. Since it is linearly ordered, I do not have to take finite intersection property, it will automatically because I have told we have a family FA of non empty closed subsets linearly ordered by the closure such that intersection is empty. Okay. So, this is stronger than saying that there is some family with finite intersection properties, the intersection is empty. Okay, so this is where we have used XY 10.94.
for convenience we should index this family i could have just run a fa each fa has to be indexed right so i fix an a then i am indexing it by ft t belonging to ta okay so ta is the indexing set that indexing set itself gets a linear order like the, of, as following namely t is less than or equal to s if and only if ft contains fs reverse order okay so t and s belong to t so uh, in some sense i am taking this decreasing uh, decreasing families okay I can't say decreasing sequence and so on. This is not a TAs are not not necessarily countable. They may be countable. They may be finite. I don't know, but they need not be countable. That's all. So T is less than equal to S if and only if F T contains F S. See, I don't need to float a TA, but this is this uh, this is just uh, for the convenience and it will clarify the the proof later on. That's all. The F A itself is a family so if you take an element here two elements here one is contained in the other so that's all i but i need that uh, suffix uh, instead of fa using members of fa itself i am using t so as soon as i have t belong to t there is a corresponding ft that's all so that is why i have to take this indexing separately from 10.92 about partial orders and so on this uh, linear order system we get a subset lambda a of t a which is well ordered and co final subset of t a okay, given any any member of t a say a t there will be some s okay which is bigger than uh, t in this sense and belonging to lambda a that is the meaning of cofinals okay so these two things right now i have used from now onwards we are just using uh, just ordinary constructions here quotient space and so on okay so we add one extra point to each lambda a okay you can you can call this as infinity a or one but i will call it as just lambda a it is very convenient notation take lambda a itself as your last element this is a set the set lambda a consists of elements of this one you see lambda a union lambda a lambda a prime okay just one extra element that extra element itself is lambda a. all right so take this now you extend the linear order on this well order on lambda a to the entire lambda a prime by just declaring this lambda a as the maximal element the one maximum element actually the lambda a is bigger than or equal to all t belonging to lambda a that's the meaning of it now you take the ordered topology on lambda a prime because there is a maximal element also this will be a compact hausdorff space it's always hausdorff space the compactness comes because of this extra point that you have taken it's like a one point compactification okay now put y equal to disjoint union of all these lambda a's where a ranges over a starting with this this uh, neighborhood system which is indexed by a that a comes here okay disjoint union of all these compact sets okay this is a huge set this is why itself is not a compact set. all right with disjoint union topology disjoint union topology on each lambda a prime i have the order topology having taken this space y now i construct the quotient space z by identifying all these extra points lambda a lambda a will be equal to lambda b for a and b inside capital a for all a and b one single point that i have denoted as z not and the quotient space i have denoted by z 
I repeat, how is that constructed? No other elements of lambda a prime are disturbed. Only the extra point that you have taken lambda a, all of them are identified together to single point. That is Z naught. So this is a quotient map. So this quotient map has the property that on Z naught you have all these lambda a's, the fiber. Everywhere else it is a one one map. Inverse image of every other point is just one single point. Okay. So this is the quotient map. That means this is a, this is a quotient uh, function. So we give the quotient topology on Z. That's all. We claim that Q is as required. It's a quotient map such so that identity of X cross Q is not a quotient map. So two things we have to prove. Okay. <laughs> Actually, we have to prove only quotient map is fine. It's not a quotient map. For that, we have to prove something. Okay. So here is a preparation for this. For each A inside A, what we have? And each lambda inside lambda A prime. That means what? Lambda A prime has one extra element of a capital lambda A, right? So you can take that for the lambda. Put E lambda equal to intersection of all f sigmas where sigma is less than lambda okay so if this lambda was capital lambda a then what is this intersection this intersection will be all this fts right where t belongs to this uh, lambda a not lambda a prime and what was the assumption? The assumption was that, remember this assumption, intersection is empty. If I take anything smaller, then what happens? Because it is a decreasing sequence, okay. In, in any case, first of all, since the intersection of closed subsets, each E lambda is a closed subset of U A bar. Okay, E lambda, remember these are all subsets of UA, UA bar. E lambda is contained inside F lambda, okay, and F lambda is not empty if lambda is not the whole of lambda A. Each E lambda contains F lambda here already, okay, because. <laughs> E lambda is what intersection of all these things. It contains the next one because all of them contain F lambda. Right? It is a decreasing thing. So, and F lambda is non empty. Non -empty. Every member is non empty. So, if this lambda is not the last element, then this is non empty. If lambda is last element, then of course this is empty. Okay. So that is all uh, elementary observation. Now we want to show that the map identity cross Q is not a quotient map. What we do? We take a closed subset of the of the uh, of the total space, which is the inverse image of some set. Okay, that some subset below is not closed. Okay, so that's what we want. So put S A for each A, S A equal to E lambda cross lambda. This is X cross lambda A. Okay, where this lambda is are inside only lambda A. I have not taken the last mag the maximal element here. Put S A equal to E lambda cross lambda. Each of them is a closed subset of X cross lambda A now. Okay, because this lambda A has uh, the order topology, singleton sets are closed, there is a Hausdorff space. We claim that 
a series closed subset of x cross lambda a prime itself. The whole thing is a subset of lambda a x cross lambda a prime because lambda a prime is a larger sub space than lambda a. In particular, it is a closed subset of x cross lambda a also. See, it's easy to see each of them is a closed subset, but why the union? This union is an arbitrary union, right? Over all the lambda. But we want to say that that is also a closed subset. So, how do you prove that? Take a point x lambda which is not in SA. Okay. Something is this want to show that this is a closed subset. The same thing as complement is open. All right. So start with a point x lambda which is not in SA. What is the meaning of this is not in any of these? It's a union of these things, right? So this means that x is not in this first co coordinate is not inside E lambda, right? If x is in inside E lambda for any of these lambda, then this would have been inside SA. This means x is not in E lambda, but E lambda is what? Intersection of all f sigma, where sigma is less than lambda. If something is not in the intersection, which implies that there exists some sigma less than lambda, such that x is not in f sigma. Right? Let R sigma with the right open ray inside lambda A prime. Remember, these are all well ordered subsets. The right ray, etc., left ray, etc., all makes sense. Okay. So, once you have got some sigma here, R sigma means what? All those, all those lambdas which are bigger than sigma. So, that is your lambda A prime. Uh, that is your R sigma inside lambda A prime. Then F sigma complement, F sigma is closed subset, F sigma complement will be an open subset cross R sigma which is also an open subset. F sigma complement contains X because X is not in F sigma and R sigma is an open subset okay, which contains lambda. So, this is a neighborhood of x lambda in x cross lambda a prime. All right. It is easily checked that this SA intersection, this open subset is empty. What does that mean? That this is contained in the complement of SA. So, what I have shown here is that x comma lambda belonging to SA has an open subset which does not intersect SA at all. Open neighborhood which does not intersect SA at all. That means this complement of SA is open. That is the whole thing. Okay. So, why this is not is empty? For this you have to use the elementary fact here that Ft is bigger than Fs if T is less than S. Okay. You take a point here, it cannot be inside SA for any of them is all that you have to show. So, we have got a set here which is a closed subset of X cross lambda A prime. All right. So, in particular, it is a closed subset of X cross lambda A also because it is contained in X cross lambda A. Now take S to be H of S A and take union of all over all A inside A. Okay. See each S A is a closed subset of X cross lambda A. Disjoint union of those things with the disjoint union topology is Y. Therefore, disjoint union of all these essays. That is a closed subset in Y cross lambda, sorry, no, Y itself. Y itself is the disjoint. There is no Y cross. So, that is a subspace Y, right? So, Y has this disjoint union of closed subset. That is a closed subset. Okay, in the disjoint union topology, there is no problem. 
all right but s is its image h of s a as a rings over a is the same thing as h of all these disjoint unions that is subset of x cross set pair okay because first coordinate i have taken as x here so we claim that h inverse of s is a closed subset of x cross y which is nothing but i just told you disjoint union of all these uh oh sorry here all these ss is a uh, subset of x cross this uh, y here not y x cross y okay yeah so what we have got is that h inverse of s is closed this why we already seen but s is not closed in s cross that which will show that h is not a gaussian map h b identity of x cross q all right so again i am repeating here h inverse of s intersection is x cross lambda a prime is these ss therefore they are closed so h inverse of s is closed Okay, this I have repeated. I have already told you. All that I need to show is that its image inside X cross L is not closed. Okay, for this we want to check that X not comma Z not is not in S because Q inverse of Z not is all singleton says A inside A, right? However. we claim that x not z not is in the closure it is closure is taken in s cross z something is in the closure and not inside s just meant just this is not a closed set that's all okay x x x not comma z not would have been inside a <laughs> see what is s by definition is h of s s x cross z okay it will never hit the point z not at all all right that is the whole idea so for this start with x not z not inside u cross v where u is open in x and v is open in z i want to show that this is in the closure we sort take any neighborhood i could take standard neighborhoods show that it intersects s that's all okay so take a basic neighborhood u cross v of x not z not in the product topology okay let a belong to a be chosen such that u a bar is contained inside u so what i am using here that this family of u a bar is a neighborhood system at a so if u is a neighborhood of a neighbor system at x not sorry if u is a neighborhood of x not there will be some a so set u a bar is contained inside u okay this is a closed system of closed neighborhoods none of them is compact that is how we have chosen this note that this lambda a is in q inverse of v intersection with lambda a prime the top thing will be there because z not is there inside v okay so q inverse of v will have this lambda a prime lambda a itself in which is in lambda a prime and hence we will have some lambda belong to lambda a that means we something less than that one such that q lambda will be inside v because it's a neighborhood inside inside uh, this lambda a prime the q inverse of v is open right q is a quotient map it's an open subset contains this point this is the maximal element so there must be some right ray right which contains that starting from lambda maybe something smaller than that so you can take some lambda beyond to lambda is such that this q lambda is inside or you can say that uh, something less than lambda say lambda prime open to 
capital lambda a close that entire thing is contained inside q inverse of q which is same thing as q of that is inside it follows that now h of e lambda cross lambda if you come down under the quotient map okay is contained inside u cross v see this h just identifies all these lambdas when lambda is smaller to the same elements here there is no identity map so that will be inside u cross v intersection s okay which completes the proof you just recall that s is also h of s s all right so this e lambda h of e lambda cross lambda is in the u cross v that is a possible example so i will just make this remark we kept the statement of the theorem as simple as possible unlike the original statement given in michael's paper indeed the quotient map that we have constructed satisfies a number of properties let us say it belongs to a special class capital p of quotient maps this class cash capital p is a class of all quotient maps from x to y where x is a disjoint union of compact top star spaces and fibers of q are all singletons except one fiber which is discrete closed set so this is actually this x is our y and y is z i have deliberately changed them because you should be you should be able to do that on your own also okay what we have what is the quotient maps are very peculiar only one point inverse may may be having too many points rest of the points inverse image has consists only one point such maps you take and such maps if for all such maps identity cross is a quotient map okay if you take the then x will be locally compact that is the statement that we have actually proved but we don't want to insist on that one so we can add these three also in the theorem 1 2 3 are all equivalent this will be much weaker statement than two i mean in looking you know because this is a sub class okay that's all thank you next time we will do something else